this painting is by uh, a man named Whitridge. Now, he was a Hudson River School painter. The Hudson River School painters and the, and the recorders, as they called them, Western painters, painted at the same time. And the, uh, it, it, this is a wonderful painting. It's, it's crossing the plat. You see the old crone here. They'd all go to Europe and they'd study art over there, and they'd, they'd come back and and they'd paint the old art, the the old crone, right in that painting. And they're crossing the river. Buffalo, off in the distance and the dust, and uh, they even got to look like a little cocker spaniel sw swimming across there with the with the Indians. It's a wonderful painting. This is the capstone of the whole collection, Catterskill Falls. It's, uh, they call it, he really did start what they called the Hudson River Movement, but I just call them nature paintings. Actually, uh, this painting is it. It's the keystone thing of the whole, whole outfit. A la James Fenimore Cooper, you know, the last of the Mohicans. And it certainly can arguably, or I say, it's the greatest American painting that ever was, and, and people agree with it. it. It was painted in America before, before Thomas Cole went to Italy and became uh, Italianate. There you got the falls, you got the rainfall, you got God up in the right-hand corner, it's been to the Vatican two times. Up here, up here you got, <laughs> that's birth. Here's teenagers, see how dark that fall is? Here, here, here's their trials and tribulations and dark caves and uh, it's not the best time of their life. And then you come down here, this is middle age. See how bright it is and happy, happiest times of our life. And down here, that's death. It's hit those rocks and splashed out. That's de death. Over here is mortality, mortality. Here maybe is going to heaven. It's just a great, great, great picture. If this is the way God intended it to be painted, it's the way it was. Frederick Church, he became the only pupil of Thomas Cole. And he painted this little picture. And that little picture there, that's Moses overlooking the promised land. And it quickly became the most, my favorite of all of them. Even, even more of a favorite than Catterskill Falls because it's the American Eden. See, the little church was there, the only pupil. And he, while he was learning how to paint under, under Thomas Cole, he painted this one. And he was very young. This guy was only, <laughs> he was only, he was in his late 20s. This guy must have been been about 18 or something. And he painted that thing, and that's the American Eden. It's just the greatest little picture you ever saw in your life. Moses overlooking the promised land. You know, Cole was only 18 when he came to America. And this little old Gifford guy, he came along. He must have been a kid too, like, like, like he's, but he came along and painted right along with uh, Thomas Cole and all these other guys. And he painted with them. He wasn't a student like the last guy I talked about, but he, see, he painted the same at Falls right there. You can hardly see it. You know what he said? He said, it's not the natural object itself as you paint, but rather it's through the curtain of light, uh, humidity and atmosphere through what you see it. Now you can, you can see that in this painting, he's got that curtain there. Here's a tourist, doggone it, the tourist came. You know what, why they came? They came to look at Catterskill Falls and there was a platform right on top of it for these tourists to come to. And they'd stay at the Catskill Mountain House. They were all within a stone throw of each other. And here, I love it because here's the tourist, right here, and here's Gifford's painting. And he painted along with church and coal, coal and church. Well, we just talked about the Gifford and 
and the little little uh, tourist in the corner that came to see the Catterskill Falls. And now we, now we come to what I call the Catskill Mountain House, and that's by Thomas Cole. There's the hotel. Well, that's where that little tourist would have stayed. He stayed right up there in that hotel. And here's old Thomas Cole himself on the road painting that darn thing. To me, it was so much, it was America. That's why I bought it. The temple on the hill, the white temple on the hill. You know, in our song, my gosh, and Alexis de Tocqueville, by the way, came to, came to look at some of these temples on the hill. And he said, I went up to see that marble temple on the hill. And when I got up there, it was merely whitewashed wood. And I suppose this was only whitewashed wood, but it's got 13 columns up there. And it is America. God bless America. And when I saw that, I had to have it. And I had to pay a lot to get it too. Well, people ask me what my favorite painting is, and of course that varies with the time and the circumstances, and maybe, maybe, maybe it's the one I bought, uh, bought the most recently. Anyway, it's always kind of fun. And I always come back to Bierstadt. I, you see Bierstadt, uh, he painted drama, like the opening of, of theatrical opening, the curtains opening on, on, on opening night, maybe the clash of symbols. You see the translucence of the wave. He could, he could paint water and light. He was a regular chamber of commerce guy. See God back there and the transmigration of the soul. They, they, these artists all love these souls floating around in the sky and the power of water. You can just hear this picture. It was a wish, you know, the water. And, and you can see why in this picture in the animals, life, God, water, translucence of the wave, drama, This, this is a Frederick Church, a big Frederick Church, one of the very, very uh, early ones. Out of the back window, I think, of Yulana or wherever that was he lives, it's looking down. It certainly manifests destiny. Look at the tree. Earth's children cling to earth, and yet they undulate upwards, and they cast off that bird, transmigration of the soul or something. I see a lot of Japanese influence in that. It, it almost looks like a Japanese scroll, but that's a wonderful picture. The museum sometimes cut this tree out because it's, it's got so much depth and, and nuancing of color in it. It, it, it. Of all the trees I've ever looked at, that, that is the most uh, uh, wonderful uh, rendition of a tree I've ever seen.